G'day to you. Well, this is yet another episode of the Ask and Prosper show. So if you're watching this part of the show, you're watching the pre-recorded version, okay, of a live um, one-hour show that we're going to be doing later on. So I, I um, encourage you to just type in the number two so that we can understand which, um, you know, part of the video you're watching. But in, in all essence, today we're going to be talking about um, is it leads that you want or is it sales that you want or are you getting it all mixed up and you know it's causing a lot of confusion um, you know within your efforts okay so basically my name is Prosper Tarovinga and um, I will be your host for this Ask and Prosper show and I noticed there's a lot of people that are jumping on but while they're jumping on I really want that you understand that I viscerally believe um, you know that if you're running an online business it has to be profitable and you actually have to um, you know enjoy um, you know working in that business there's no point in you sacrificing your happiness sacrificing your life um, you know and everything else that comes along with it and doing something that you're not viscerally enjoying so that's the reason why every single day Monday to Friday um, we sit around here and then I just talk about how you two can be do and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable and um, half of the time when we sit around like this I normally pick up a topic from the blueprint that I created and I will be talking about it a great deal um, later on it's got four simple stages that you can follow first of all you need to find the right kind of client with the right um, and then match that client with the right kind of leads uh, I mean with the right kind of content and pretty much from then on convert that person into a buying customer so that's where a lot of people get caught up in trying to figure out do we really need um, 500 leads or do we really need to actually be making sales right there so I want you also once you're watching this to type in um, the comments there what is it that you actually sell just maybe is it service or product type in service or product right there so that I can understand how to direct um, you know most of this show because it's gonna be going for an hour so we really want to see um, you know um, what exactly everybody else is up to and how I can help you by actually helping you so basically what happens is you would pose a few questions ask uh, um, you know me how I'm running my business because I'm leading a team of digital marketing experts um, here at live long digital that sit around and they're looking at the latest trends and really trying to figure out how they can get the results that we're looking for um, you know for some of our audience so you might be watching it up up until this far and you're thinking to yourself um is this guy really worth my attention you know you you are up to the right to ask a soul and I see Luke Corin how are you doing my brother today is the ask and prosper show and obviously as you know uh, some people will always watch in post-production let me know um, you know if you've got any questions for me or we'll be talking about lead generation and how you two can actually um, you know uh, get those leads that you are looking for and I see Steven Seddon has also tuned in thank you so much my brother um, I'm hoping you've been fantastic and I hope that you've managed to consolidate both your websites so that you can start receiving um, you know leads as they come through okay so as you understand today is the Friday ask and prosper show you can ask me any questions you might have pertaining to your business how to um, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable any digital marketing strategies you might have come across or something that I would have said um, you know during the week I want you to let me know what's going on. Grace Mugabe, hope you're having a fantastic um, time over there. It's been a while. I haven't seen or heard from you uh, in a minute. Are you in Australia? Can you can you type in the comments and let me know where you're at? Um, the last time I checked, you were in South Africa. Or oh, are you back? I'm not sure how it all works out. So, yeah, this is the Ask and Prosper show. You feel free to ask me any questions you might have pertaining to how to get leads, how to get revenue or increase revenue within your business, how to actually create a website that works, how to be seen or um, you know um, where your clients are searching on Google, anything to do with digital marketing strategies um, that you might have come across social media, I'm more than happy to field those questions for you. So while we're waiting for the questions to come through, um, 
Grace says, hi, yes, got back from Thailand last week. Wow, must have been a good trip. Thailand is pretty good. Um, was it a business trip or were you out there relaxing? Because um, obviously there, there is, <clears throat> you know, there is, um, th there's quite a lot going on in Thailand at the moment uh, when it comes to, you know, the online space. So if you were there for business, let me know. And if you were just there traveling, that's also perfect. So some of you guys might be wondering, you know, is this guy really worth my attention? Or maybe you've been following me for a while and trying to figure out, is it, is it, is it really worthwhile listening to what I've got to say and things like that? Well, first of all, I'm not going to Touch my own home. Some of my results are all over the place. We have a lot of people that are actually enjoying the service that um, you know we we provide. You can also see the reviews that we're getting from our clients. Um, half of the team that we have is Google certified, and also the best part about it is nearly every account that we have for seo is actually on first page on google if they're not actually number one within their particular niche so that is also a remarkable thing that not a lot of seo people can claim and um it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of um tenacity only because i refuse to accept mediocrity within my business. So you rest assured, if we're gonna be working together, you are gonna be receiving quality of service, you are gonna be receiving you know, the best that is, um, you know, yet to come. And I see Charlie O'Shea has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my brother. I'm hoping you've had a fantastic week. Today, this show is kind of different. It is the Ask and Prosper show. So feel free to field any questions that you might have pertaining to how to grow an online business and or things that I might have said during the week that might have caught in your attention that you might need clarity on. Now, for those that are watching this for the first time, you really might be pondering and asking yourself, is this guy really, really worth my attention? For most of you, I must say no, okay? Um, because first of all, I'm not gonna help you get rich quick. And second of all, I'm, I hate anything to do with Bitcoin, I hate anything to do with MLM, anything that does not have substance within it, I do not entertain. And also you might um, be looking at me and thinking how, you know, um, you know, how else can I, you know, um, you know, get any benefit from this guy? If you're not willing to put in the work, if you're not willing to, um, you know, advertise, you're not going to enjoy any of my content. If you don't like working hard and you expect things to be handed over to you, you're not going to enjoy any of my content. If you don't actually want to grow a business, um, you know, that actually means something and something that you're going to will off to your kids um, you know, as, as, and leave something of relevance that will be a legacy, you're definitely not going to enjoy any of my content. And if you're looking for the easy way, um, you know, and looking for the next shiny objects, I don't want to help you. You know what I mean? And this is what I can actually help you with, um, you know, specifically. Um, I've got a proven four-step system that I created almost three years ago and I've used it within my business and it's really, really helped out. For those people that haven't gotten a chance to check out the blueprint, type in the words blueprint and I'll send you through a copy of this um, you know, blueprint. It's designed to help you um, start, scale and grow a business that's actually profitable and you actually enjoy working in it. And um, you, know, you will start to actually generate five to 10 or 15, depending on what it is that you actually sell, high ticket clients every single month and with predictability, you know what I mean? And um, you know, you will, what, what I can do is I can start you off on a 30 day challenge so that we can actually implement this. So that's the reason why I was saying, I do not offer strategies that are just um, quick fix or a one click wonder. We will go in and we'll actually identify the right kind of clients that you need, the right kind of market, um, and, and, and the people that are willing and able to actually buy from you. And I will actually show you, you know, the simple strategies that we, we use to engage with our customers and really get permission from the audience because it's not easy these days to actually get the permission that you actually need um, in order to be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. First, you need the attention. 
people to actually listen to what you've got to say. And second of all, you actually then need to have substance in order to sell to them. That's why I teach how to engage, how to educate your audience on what to actually want, how to inspire them and how to actually provide value. And in the process, you're positioning yourself. And you know why? Because once you've positioned yourself as a person that can help your audience, they would know where to get stuff from. And I see Chris Logan has just tuned in. My brother, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Hope everything has been perfect for you um, across there. Tell me how, um, how the year has started off for you. What have you been up to? I haven't seen much of you around. Are you off to a good start or just type in the comments and let me know, um, you know, how you feel on a scale of one to 10, how the year has started for your business right now. Okay. And um, one other thing that I do help with as, as an SEO expert is I've discovered the psychology of converting um, website visitors into paying customers. The one thing that we don't understand is not everyone is your customer. Not everyone is ready to purchase right there and then as soon as they see your, your stuff. Some people don't have a bleeding neck, so to speak. Some people have just broken their nail and they just need a replacement. And some people are just there at the doctor's, um, you know, shop for a, for a checkup. So the problem that we now do as, um, you know, entrepreneurs is we want to bombard everyone with the same content at the same time, hoping that it will convert. So that's where we miss it. Um, a lot and that's where um, I then differentiate is it leads that you actually want or do you want to make a sales so a lot of people get that all mixed up um, let me know if um, you know what, what it is that I might have to work with you regarding um, especially when it comes to sales and when it comes to lead generation because not everyone is um, you know, going through the same thing at the same time, you know what I mean? And I see Jemmy Stenhouse has just tuned in. How are you doing, my brother? You're the Friday man, right? <laughs> see, it happened again. The first time we caught up was a Friday, and um, half of the time you show up on my live feeds on a Friday. So, yeah, <laughs> hope you're getting all ready for the weekend, and I love your stuff, my man. Um, you know, hope we can catch up soon and see what it is that you're working on these days. All right. So there's always you, there's always the customer, there's always, you know, the, the product or the service that you're selling. Both of these entities are totally different. Um, the, you're approaching these things at totally different times and in depending on where you are with the product life cycle, with the customers um you know um you know life cycle as well within your funnel etc etc and where you are as a person your threshold for for delivering service because when you're starting when you're starting your business you your main focus is to just make sure you're presenting the best uh product out there so that people can buy and um what you miss out on is creating relationships with the people that are willing and able to purchase from you so all of those things are things that the blueprint can address because once you know the right kind of person what pain they're actually going through you would know what payoff they would appreciate from the product that you're selling off to them because Nobody, um, like I said, not everyone is your customer at any given time. You know what I mean? So some people are not ready just now. Some people are probably ready next uh, week. Some people are ready in two years, depending on where they are personally within themselves. And I see Cindy Drake has just tuned in. Thank you so much. I'm hoping you've had a fantastic week. Um, this is the Ask and Prosper show where you generally have to ask questions in order for me to keep going so it's like insert coin um, for me to s continuously speak if anyone has any questions let a brother know um, Cindy I'm doing fantastic um, yeah I'm hoping you're doing well too and um, Cindy I am about to also um, post your video on the new platform so when you get a chance um, if you go on to, I don't know if I have it, let me just type it in for you, uh, Cindy, if you're still there, um, w, 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 I didn't know I could do this, but now I know, so I'm going to continuously do it. 
Uh, I missed it up. Okay, www. Uh, where is it? Dot. Uh, a b o d. Dot. Yeah, it's not easy when when you've got this going. Com. Dot. A u. Right there, you go. Um, Cindy, I just typed in. Um, the link. Yes, I've just typed in the link so that you can go and uh, set up your profile. So basically, what the 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 online um, the Australian business online directory does is um, it it makes it easy for Australian businesses, you know, to find services in and around. Uh, Australia and you can instantly connect with other online businesses so since I already did an interview with you um, what that means is um, you know people that can search for you they can also watch that video and then it, it automatically has created content and automatically uh, positions you as, as as an authority then and I see Bill Parker has just tuned in what's going on my man if you've got any questions pertaining to um, you know how to market scale and grow your business or any other digital marketing strategy questions you might have I'm more than happy to field those um, you know today and then we can continuously go um, uh, Cindy says whoa that's great stuff you just keep doing new things <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> at the end of the day, Cindy, if you're not growing uh, or, you know, if you're not improving, then, um, you know, you're, 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 you're nearly as dead. So that, you know, um, you, the, 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 the directory works as a stepping stone towards bigger things since Facebook has just cut off the reach in the news feed. I don't know if a lot of people have understood that part. Um, you no longer can reach your audience through Facebook. So if you're utilizing the Australian Business Online Directory, you would be in a position to actually reach an audience that is targeted, that is in Australia, that can actually help you be to and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Christopher is asking a question and he says, is there anything like that exists in other places? And how do you create a story on a platform like Instagram? Great stuff. All right. So create... Um, by creating a story, Christopher, can you explain, are you talking about creating a brand story or are you talking about creating that, you know, 24 hour loop that Instagram, uh, stole from Snapchat? Let me know if that's what you're asking so that I can, um, you know, direct your question favorably. And I see Tav Shamano has just tuned in. What's going on, brother? It's, the uh, Friday show, the Ask and Prosper show. If you do have any questions, let a brother know. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, uh, while we're waiting for Chris to, to, to gather up his thoughts, I really, really want you to understand that. Oh, you mean how do you create a brand story? Okay. I'm not sure if you were watching yesterday's show, but, um, <clears throat> you know, your brand story is how people relate to you um, as an individual. You know, people buy from people. So um, they can always retain um, fact. I mean, they can always retain stories that have they've been told about your brand, but seldom can they retain, um, you know, statistics or whatever, um, you know, f features of what your brand actually does. So if you want people to relate to who you are as a person, for them to be emotionally involved with what you're selling, you have to tell a story that they can relate to because your life story and your own unique experience have greater commercial value there, Chris, than you can ever possibly think of. You know, you know why? Because you're going through life as a separate being, but you're also experiencing life as some other people might be experiencing it. So you might have a, a rent to riches type of story that somebody can relate to how you started the kind of, um, you know, um, you know, hardship you went through in order to create your business. Some people might want to learn that aspect and they would be able to learn from you, which opens up a, a category where you can actually mentor some people. All right. So, you know, we, we downplay 
our achievements. You know, sometimes you, you even just creating a website, even creating a Facebook page is, is, is a big and audacious goal for somebody who hasn't done it. So you can document the process of how you've done it. That could be your brand story. Um, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a, a, as much as how the the narrative is 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 used to, like, you know, people 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 relate to stories of, you know, all those startups that started off in a garage. Maybe you didn't start off like that. Maybe you actually had money that you saved up, um, you know, prior to that. That also is a unique position that maybe other people are going through, but they don't understand that it's okay to tell out that story. So whatever you have, you might um, give other people the liberty to actually showcase who they are, um, you know, by presenting yourself as who you are. So that's the, the most important part about, uh, you know, telling out your own brand story, because that then makes it the unique proposition that you have because no one would have gone through what you went through in order for you to create the product that you have. And also, let's say you are selling a product that you personally created. Some people want to know the journey. Some people want to relate to how that product came to being. And eventually, those are the, that's the thing that, you know, they, they get emotionally attached to. We sell a lot to somebody's logic, but people respond um, to products, goods and services through emotion. So stories are where it's at when it comes to, um, you know, striking that emotion, um, which makes people actually understand, um, you know, what we're serving and how and who we serve it to. OK, so you want to make sure that you harness the part of telling your brand story and um, you will relate to a lot more people than if you just tell people the features of your product. Now, I see Montre, um has just tuned in. How's it going, brother from New Zealand? Hope you're having a fantastic day right there. It's the Ask and Prosper show. If you have any questions, let a brother know. All right. So. I mean, during the week, we've been we've been, um, you know, experiencing uh, a lot of changes, um, you know, when it came to the Facebook algorithm. And today I also realized that they're coming up with new changes in as much as um, when when you post something and if people comment on it, now people can either upvote that comment or they can downvote that comment. So it is something that they're still experimenting on. So be on the lookout for that. It's just something that excited me as I saw it today, um, you know, um, as soon as it came in. So more and more, it's getting harder and harder to reach our audience using Facebook. So if you're in Australia, be sure to claim a profile on the Australian Business Online Directory where you can actually showcase, um, you know, your content. You can actually engage, um, you know, the audience. You can actually educate that audience by, you know, um, your content because, as you know, People are coming to the internet to get information. So if you're the person or the brand that's telling a story, that's educating people, then people get to know you, like you, and trust you. And guess what happens when people know, like, and trust you? They do business with you. All right. So um, let's have the questions rolling. Let's have the questions rolling. Thank you so much for those that are participating at the moment. And Christopher, can you tell me if I have adequately answered your question? Just type in yes or no there so that we can... Um, you know, expand and also have other people understand what's actually going on there. All right. So help a brother out. Let me know what questions you might have. You know, this makes the show fun. And then it also shuts me up because then I have to keep talking. And then, you know, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. All right. Um, what else is there? What else is there? This was a really good week. Can you just type in the number one if this was an exceptional week for you? The number two if, you know, you could have done better, but it was still good. The number three if, nah, in between, you know, you've had better weeks. The number four if, nah, you know, you'd want it to start all over again or you can't wait for it to finish. I just want to see where everybody else is at because at the end of the day, we both need to be um, you know, understanding each other. Some people are fast learners. Some people, um, you know, they're in the slow lane. Some people are in the fast lane. Um, we all can't 
be receiving information or getting the same results at the same time. It's because we are genetically, um, you know, different so that every person serves a unique, um, you know, um, you know, as everybody serves a unique um, uh, purpose in the universe. You know what I mean? Just like my fingers there, you know, not all fingers are of the same height. I speak this out of love and, um, you know, out of respect, just in case you don't have fingers. I'm not being, <laughs> I'm not being disrespectful, but all your fingers are never the same height. So, and if you miss any one of these fingers, you know, it, it, it causes problems for you and it causes, you know, you know, it, it just doesn't work perfectly. So imagine your whole hand is the whole world and you are representing a finger in that hand. So the moment that you're not there, it actually, you know, disrupts the, the way a finger should be working. All right. So as part of what I do, um, you know, in, in my day to day life, uh, besides quenching fires that live long digital, I always try and define what marketing is. Um, as as you would know, marketing is, is, is being redefined every single day, just like Elon Musk in the last couple of days by shooting one of those uh, t Tesla road stars into space. Nobody has ever attempted that and he's marketed that car for the rest of its entire life because you know, generations to come, they're all going to be trying to figure out where is it now in space. And the name Tesla is just going to be known for the rest of, you know, humankind. So, yeah, you might ask yourself, so what is marketing? And this is this is like a question a lot of, um, you know, marketers themselves have tried to answer. And sometimes they get it wrong. And the way you define it is the way that you actually go out there and, and utilize um, you know, that principle, you know, and I'm not saying I've got a definite, def definitive answer to it. But for me, marketing is really simple, really, really simple. It's about creating one on one relationships in a one to many way. All right. Figure out who your audience is and start creating for and relating to that audience. That's what marketing really is. All these other smoke and mirrors, shiny objects that are coming through. Um, if they're not bringing you closer to your audience, they're not worth it. If they're not bringing you, um, you know, bringing your word, your message to an audience that's willing and able to pay for those goods and services, it's all a waste of time. You know what I mean? So at first glance, you might think that this sounds impossible to have relationships with everyone else, but it isn't. The key is to know exactly who are you serving? What are they actually going through? How will they know that they've actually received a proper payoff? And what are they actually buying from you? And once you can articulate that to an audience that's willing and able, and you become intimate with them and knowing what stage they are in the buyer's journey, I can assure you, you will be head and shoulders above everybody else that's chalam, that's, 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 you know, trying to be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable out there, you know? So it's, it's, um, it's, it's one of those things that when you really, really look at it, when you really, really, um, assess what's being put out there in the market, what most marketers are actually getting wrong and what I've soon discovered, because I, I testify that I read a lot and I gauge what everybody has been saying from 50 years ago, from 30 years ago, from 20 years ago, from yesterday, you know, and some people just take things on face value. I study this, you know, some marketers right now, they're getting it wrong because they're trying to automate a process that doesn't need automating. How do you automate intimacy? How do you automate knowing somebody to the core of actually knowing what they're doing, what their business is about, and if your product is a perfect fit? You can't automate that. So you really got to roll up your sleeves, know everybody else, high five with people, um, you know, as they walk through in and out of your funnel. Because at the end of the day, a lot of us now start getting obsessed with growing and, and scaling our businesses. Yet there's a good chance that you actually don't need massive amounts of leads at any given time. 
What is it that is important in your business? Is it leads or is it sales? Can you type in the comments there? What, what is it that you go out every single day in your business to search for? Can you type it? Is it leads or is it sales? All right. Cause then, then you would understand what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Because some people, you know, the amount of people that come to me and say, Oh, I, I need this in my business. And then, and then when I look at maybe their website or maybe whatever um, representation they have on social media or whatever so, or online footprint they might have, it's, it's mediocre to say the least, you know what I mean? But there they are going on about saying, oh, I need leads or I need sales, but they have no idea, do you know what I mean? The, 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 the quality of their products, the quality of their message, how it is actually differentiated from the rest of everybody else who's trying to sell that same commodity. And Stephen Sitton says sales are important within your business. Absolutely. All right. And instead, I think all you really, really need is quality connections that actually count. Quality connections that actually count. And those connections are willing and able to actually purchase your goods and services. Now, Christopher says leads, but really sales, it, um, it comes to com conversion. All right. So obviously leads can be somebody who puts in their email address uh, on your landing page, but what if that person actually does not convert? And what if that person is just wanting to find out what are the next moves? So some people are bored in life. You know, they might just answer to your, you know, your, your Facebook ad, and then you later on realize they don't even have a business. So you really need to figure out, are you finding the right kind of people? Do they really have a pain that your product can actually um, you know, service. What is the payoff that they are actually looking for and that your product can provide? And what is that product you're actually selling? You know, can you type in the comments there? What product are you selling right now? Can you just type in the comments so that I understand? Because sometimes some people don't actually even realize if their product is even needed in the market. You know? Some, sometimes you might not even have an audience for that product, but the fact that you've been working behind the scenes and trying to create something that you, you're, you are now too legit to quit, um, you know, continuing with, it, it might just be, it might just be hard for you to know whether you're actually reaching out to an audience that wants it or not. <laughs> Tav says your product is prosperity. Um, is that what you sell? <laughs> do you sell do you sell prosperity to people, my man? Cause you know, you know when I when I got into business, I mean, obviously, and guys, come on, questions. Where are the questions? Where are the questions? And Stephen says commercial work but um yes, we've talked, Stephen, we've talked a lot about your your product and how it can be of service. And you really need to figure out who your audience really is because um yeah, yours is, 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 is not a, an easy thing for somebody to just wake up and say, I want to go and buy a boat. You, they have to be involved in either the fishing, they have to be involved in some kind of marine or aqua project. So, you know, you really got to reach out to those people that specifically, viscerally would not, um, you know, go a day without a boat. Those are the kind of people that you need to figure out and knowing your product is the best way to actually know who would need it, you know? Um, I was still saying a couple of years ago, I created um, the Online Prosperity Blueprint. And I see Stephen Kelly has just tuned in. Mama, what's happening? Um, I, I love I love your shows, man. They, yeah, they're bringing in heat. What's happening? This is a Prosper, the Ask and Prosper show. So if you've got any questions, um, you know, pertaining to how to start, scale and grow a business, let me know. All right. And um, yeah, I was just saying, you know, um, when I created the blueprint, um, it has actually helped a lot of entrepreneurs to bring meaningful intimacy into their lead generation. You know, because once you know the people that you're dealing with, you know how to speak to them, when to speak to them and how to actually educate them on what to want. You know, let's say you are dealing with um, um, people of the worldview view. 
that, uh, you know, they want a business that's profitable and enjoyable. They are going to be seeking out information. They are going to be seeking out things that would work in the long term. So since I already know that aspect of my, my, my audience, I continuously put content that is designed for that kind of person. And those that are just seeking, um, you know, quick fixes, they'll find themselves just falling off the bandwagon, you know? Because it, it, it removes the idea that everyone should get the same message as everybody else. Because once you know what payoff your product is actually giving, that's when you actually know who to sell that product to. Because you can't sell me a dress. I, no matter, unless I turn into Kylie Jenner or what, what is that Kylie Jenner, his, his name, Bruce Jenner, who changed into, 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 into the lady that right there, you can't sell me a dress because that's not the payoff I'm looking for. That's not the payoff I'm looking for. I don't have a pain. I don't have a bleeding neck problem in order to wear a dress. So you got to find which people do you really need to reach out to? Because not everyone is your customer. Because not everyone is your customer. And not everyone is ready to purchase the moment they hear about your stuff. Because as we would all know, it takes six to eight touch points until somebody, you know, makes a purchase. And guess why Coca-Cola and McDonald's are continuously advertising? Because they want to make sure that they're reaching out to you and you make a purchase every single day of their product. You know? So you can no longer just create one website or one funnel and or one lead, one lead magnet and expect success. It, it doesn't work anymore like that. You know, your audience is at different stages and in, in, in either their job or in their market, and you have to give them the right content at the right time. Because if you are dealing with maybe mothers, right, and you are selling a product that only three-year-olds can wear, somebody who is six months pregnant is still going to be a mother, but has no use for your product. They might be in the same age group, so you really want to figure out, am I attracting the people with the same worldview as what my product and what payoff they're going to be receiving from it? You know? In general, customers usually fit into three buckets of awareness. You know? Those people that are maybe walking, let's say you are in an in a ER room, uh, at, a, at the doctor's room. There's that one person who's just broken a nail. Do they request emergency attention? I think not. There's that one person who's coming in for a general checkup. Do they request emergency attention? I think not. Somebody who comes stabbed with a knife and the knife is still stuck in their neck, everybody clears the emergency room because that person has a bleeding neck and we you have to do whatever you can do to resuscitate that person so that's the levels of which our customers are coming to us you know what i mean so that person who's just broken a nail maybe they're just too clumsy and they're not even aware that they have a problem so they might need counseling they don't need emergency treatment you know and then there's that person who's in for a general checkup. They might be aware that they have a problem. You know what I mean? They might be aware that they have a problem, but they don't know enough of what process to follow through or what method to take on for them to move forward. And that person who's got a knife still hanging out of his neck, that person is ready to commit to whatever surgery, whatever solution, and they need more information fast so that they can survive. And Stephen Sidon says, would you suggest LinkedIn for my lead generation? Stephen, who is your client and where do they normally reside and what is it that they do in life? So if your client may be on LinkedIn, that's fine. It's still a platform, but do they need your product? So you should understand and know, is this person going to be needing my product? Because on LinkedIn... They may be recruitment consultants. On LinkedIn, there could be people in the army. On LinkedIn, there could be marketing experts. 
All right. But that doesn't mean that they need your product. It doesn't matter what platform they are. You need to know what is the right kind of person, what pain do they actually have, and then what payoff do they get from getting the product that I'm trying to flog to them. They could be on Facebook, they could be on Instagram, they could be on LinkedIn. So I can't say that LinkedIn is good for your lead generation. It also depends. You might do the lead generation today, but are you following up? Are you reaching to the person who is the last decision maker? So you can't base any lead generation to any particular platform. Your, 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 your client could be on Google. Are you being found when somebody searches boats or commercial boats? You know? So most of the time when people are desperate for a solution, they go and type it in on Google. They're not going to sit around on LinkedIn up until somebody converts them, etc., etc. So figure out where, where exactly are you with your product? Who needs it? And how fast can you deliver it to them? You know, because if you then create specific messaging for Facebook, LinkedIn, um, you know, for um, because for LinkedIn, yes, there's professional people that uh, are working there, but there's also actors. There's also janitors that have no use for your product. So I can't vouch and say, yes, go on LinkedIn. But when you go on LinkedIn, do you know the right kind of person that you're going to go there for? And I see Stephen Thompson is uh, tuned in. How's it going, my man? All right. So once you go on there, create the right kind of messaging because you understand them. You can speak their language. You can see the world through their own eyes. And then bring intimacy into that because your product is an expensive product. So people have to have the guarantees that when they lay off that kind of money, they are able to, 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 to relate to you back for maybe if they need a warranty or if they need some fixing later on down the track, you know, so you want to bring that intimacy, um, you know, into, into, into your lead generation and become relevant to the right people at the right time. Steve says leads are up. I know from last customers. Leads are up, I know, from last customers. So maybe those last customers that purchase from you, they might know somebody that is interested in your product. Have you gotten to them and asked for referrals? That could be somehow you can get more business. So figure out the people that have already bought from you, they might know a, 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 a people or some sort of people that can be able to help you out. All right? I cannot vouch that. Go on LinkedIn because... LinkedIn is also filled up with people that are looking for work. So, you know, most of the people that are on there are CEOs of a company that they are actually working for. So that doesn't mean that they own that business. Your message is the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter what media you're going to be using because you got to remember three things in marketing. You got to have a message that goes to a specific market. The media can vary. All right. So your message is exactly what are you selling and why does the person need to buy it from you? The market is the person willing and able to purchase that thing from you. And do they have a bleeding neck? And then the media can be your Facebook, your LinkedIn, any other channel that you might use. Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever suits your fancy. But it's the message that actually matters. Because let's say you were looking for your clients on Snapchat. And Snapchat is slowly dying like that. That doesn't mean people won't look you up on other platforms. You know? So it's the message that you're putting out there that actually matters. The, the media can vary. The media can be anything. As long as... Because look at this. A hundred years ago, Coca-Cola had one message. Open happiness. That is still the same message up until today. But the media that they're using to pass on that message has changed. Now they are available in blogs. Now they're available, um, you know, on, on, on digital platforms before it was on their trucks, before it was in newspapers. So your message really needs to stay consistent and reach the right kind of person with the right kind of pain. The media can always vary. Because when people can now share that message, understand that message, relate to that message, transact with that message, that's when the magic happens. You know? 
So when you now have that message and you create some sort of... Because that message then becomes content. Because people are coming to the internet to get information. You now engage that audience from whatever platform you're finding them from. You're educating them because maybe they're not aware that your product actually exists. And once you understand who your audience is... And where they fit in to, to your grand scheme of things, maybe you've got a, fu a funnel or you've got a website or you've got some sort of a landing page. You know what I mean? It's easy to, to start creating specific content for them. All right. So maybe that should work out there when you say, um, you know, um, you know, from your last customers, those are a gold mine to figure out exactly how you um. Um, you know, going to deliver your message. And cleaning up the message is important. Absolutely. And if you've noticed, my message ever since day one has always been, my business is there to help your business become profitable and enjoyable. That's the message that I really want to, to, to make people understand. And once you, you have people that are just scouting to figure out what, what solutions you, 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 you are, you are serving... Right now, they're not aware of the, the, the problem they might have. They're not aware of the pain they might be going through. So you need to produce micro content that illuminates their pain, that shows them that they would do better, get more results while they start using your product. You know? And then there's other people that might be knowing a little bit about who you are. You then start educating them and inspiring them, you know? You need to educate them about your processes. You need to educate them about what you actually provide, which means more in-depth content. So this could be articles, you know, guides and, and longer videos that will then people can sit in for an hour just because they already know, like and trust you. And they trust that the content that you're putting out there is of value, you know. And once you have that bleeding neck person. Start sharing really intimate and de detailed information, you know, such as webinars, training sessions, and one-on-one -on -one phone calls. You're bringing them closer to you. You're getting closer to their credit card, you know? Because not everyone is ready to consume the content, um, you know, that you put out there because everyone is busy. Like right now, I cannot even expect everyone to come and hang out with me for an hour. People are working. But they could always come back to this video and watch it. So that's the reason why I'm not leaving any gaps so that it's content and value throughout for the person who's going to watch this in post-production. And also for those that are watching live, I also want you to be engaged and also get value. And so that you're not going to um, you know, miss out on, on, on the gems that we might be able to, to pull out there while we're waiting for people to, to ask questions. You know, so figure out, is your message really getting to that uh, market that specific audience with the right kind of pain or whatever part of the journey they might be, the media can always be anything. Two years ago, Facebook Live was Facebook Live was not possible, but now people are tripping, stumbling, and falling because Facebook Live has a big reach. You know, and over time, the more detailed and you know the content you have, you are like Hansel and Gretel, yeah. You're leaving things that people can nibble on as they get to know you and trust you. And by building this trust, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. Some people, like I said, I won't be able to help you because, you know, some people just want a quick fix, that red button. If you're going to be building a business that's profitable and enjoyable, you got to deploy patience. Go in your customer's shoes, see things in their own light, speak their own language, and then discover, do they really, really want this product? Or am I just trying to flog it just because it's the only thing that I know? You know? And once you're actually doing a service out there in the marketplace, you're building trust. You know? And once people get into your inner circle, you know? They, they, they now actively seek you out amongst the noise. But you still have to continuously be consistent and build that trust. So just going to one platform and hoping that your customers are just going to fall over just because you, you arrived. It's probably playing with yourself, my man. 
And once you get onto a platform, you can't bombard people with sales messages because people like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. You know? And just because you are telling them that you've got these products, don't expect them to pull the trigger immediately. Because they can see that you've got a, a, a solution. But is that solution going straight to their pain? Do they want the payoff that your, your product is going to provide you? You know? And they need to trust that you've done it before, not just for yourself, but you've done it for other people as well. So that's why you need to be in the trenches, understand your audience awareness level so that you can understand that they know how relevant either your content or whatever you're dishing out there is. And you also know the perfect time to share with them the exact methods or methodologies you might have or whatever products you might have. You know? And you do this by creating a permission asset like this video right now this is me asking for your permission you know why because i'm leading with value and once you allow me to show you what's possible and how i can help you it makes for you actually working together with me and i think it used to be facebook facebook used to be the per the place where you can actually start relationships with people before you actually want to try and 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 sell to them you know so and now that you have to pay to play on facebook i might just maybe talk about the four types of ads that you actually need uh to have on facebook and when to use each and every one of them so if you're actually watching this and you're enjoying this just type in the number one it just, you know, validates because I've been speaking for almost an hour now and there hasn't been that many questions, but I'm really, really enjoying, um, you know, delivering this content because it is stuff that I live and breathe. Um, and I know that if even if you take two minutes to watch this video, you will get something that will actually dramatically change the way you actually do your business. So if you're really enjoying this video, can you just type in the number one? Um, you know, it just really helps for um, my self-esteem. Not that I need it, but, you know, just so that you are also contributing to what's happening right now, you know. And before we go, I was just going to talk about the four types of ads that you need to incorporate within your business. I, I hardly ever talk about ads, but I feel like right now this conversation needs to be had. Um, if you're also doing ads within your business, can you type in the number four? Um, if you haven't done ads within your business type in the number five all right because then it it helps my team to understand um who is who and who is watching and, and 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 what's actually taking place right now okay so i mean you can achieve a lot in your audience um by just sending them emails but you do this by getting their email address first so after you've created um a permission asset what that does for you is it really really enhances um you know it, it enhances the int intimacy that people would allow you to um to contribute and to actually have uh permission to to speak to them you know you must take your relationship away from um any marketing funnel so maybe you're getting your people from uh instagram you're getting your people from linkedin take those people away from there so that you can actually be top of mind for them because whenever you are in a news feed you know um you have sally you have your ex-girlfriend ex-boyfriend ex-manager all of those people are coming up in your news feed and then there's your content there so you're also just adding to the noise but if you take those people off and put them in a separate platform like what we have created the australia business online directory it is a platform that is designed to Take people off of Facebook so that they actually are working and creating and relating for an audience that's actually, um, you know, targeted. It, it, it will help you. So you might have that platform as a blog. You might have that platform as, a, um, as an email um, listing or a newsletter. Figure out, are you ripping off or I mean, are you taking off? The, the, the traffic you're getting from Facebook or from Google and you're actually putting it in an asset that you actually own, all right? Then you become top of mind and then people actually 
give you permission to reach out to them, you know? And then if you're using Facebook ads, um, guess what you do now? You can now retarget those people that are already listening to you. It's an easier transaction. Let's say you're writing out a blog. If you've got a pixel on that blog, you can then retarget those people that have already seen some of your content. You know why? They won't ignore your ads because they've already heard from you or about you. That's what a lot of people are not doing. They're just going in, spraying and praying and hoping that people would understand their message. It doesn't work like that. Because you should have different ads for lead generation. You should have different ads for sales. You should have different ads for awareness. You should have idea, um, um, you know, different ads for audience building. And you should make sure that each and every ad has a, ta a targeted pixel that you automatically know what stage that person is. You know? And once you've got people's attention, dominate the newsfeed with relevant content. And that content is because you know what stage that person is. Are they in the lead generation stage? Are they in the sales stage? Are they in the awareness stage? Or are they in the audience building stage? Some people don't take time to even see if any of that is relevant to them because it sounds like work. You know? Because remember, the key is not to just bombard people with content online. The key is intimacy and to build on trust. You know? So people are not just going to see your ad and drop everything they're doing and run straight and purchase whatever services you're putting out there. You know, if you're not lead generating or if you're not putting out sales ads there or if you're not audience building, then whatever ad you have running right now is wasting your money because you're not getting anything back from it. Because any of that the ads you put out, they should be building trust. They should be PR pieces and should also be social proof to show people that there's people that actually love your products, you know? And once you've got those customers from, um, you know, whatever ad strategy you're using, put them onto your own uh, platform. Because if Facebook changes their algorithm, you still have those people, they know you, they trust you, and they, and they already like you, and they're willing and able to purchase your, your services the moment you put them out there. But that takes time. That takes time. You know? So, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Not everyone is going to go through the same process in your sales funnel. And you can't share the same content to everybody in the same order. You got to provide people with an experience for them that is really, really specific either to the engagement, their awareness level, or their pain that they might be going through. You know, it's all about experiences. That's why people go to Disneyland. They could always just watch it on TV, but they fly halfway across the world just so that they have the experience. So make sure your ads are giving people an experience. Your content is giving people an experience. And then you instill the emotional discipline that people need in order to start cultivating trust and treat you as an authority figure, which is what positioning is all about. So you see how relevant the blueprint actually is, you know, because once you know the people, you know what pain they're going through, you know what payoff um, you know, your product is going to give them and you know what product they actually need at that particular time. You engage in them, you educate them, you're inspiring them. They now know who you are as a person. It's easy for you to sell. Goes back to how we started this show today. Are you looking for leads or are you actually looking for sales? And when you know what stage your client or your audience is, you give them exactly what they need when they need it and guess what the only thing that's left off of them is to reciprocate and when you nurture them you're building their trust they're going to share your content with their friends and relatives and before you know it you become omnipresent and very relevant to them without even trying and you become that go-to expert that then creates a community around everything that you're doing and branding is inevitable 
But you find out that a lot of people just go in and hope and pray that whatever they put out there is just going to work. I want you to turn around your lead generation this year and stop wasting money on the wrong content to the wrong people at the wrong time. Yeah? I hope this video is going to be so relevant to you and you're going to go back and watch it again. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching it up until this end. If you're watching this on Facebook, thank you, thank you, thank you. I bid you a fantastic weekend. And um, if there's anything that I can absolutely do to help you be you and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, Prosper is your guy. And if you really, really enjoyed today's video, please share this. For me, it's no longer a popularity contest. I'm good. Do you know what I mean? With all this information that I have, with all these strategies, and with all the new platforms that I'm creating, I'm just really pioneering a new generation of marketing that a lot of people are not even aware exists. Stop praying and spraying and praying with your marketing there. I'm here to help you out. All right? Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I know it's been a long video, but that's what Fridays are all about. And if you've got any other questions and if you didn't ask them today, you can wait until um, next Friday or let's just continue the conversation in the, in the comments below. In the meantime, you go on and actually create for and relate to your audience because you know what? They're the people that are going to be affording you the lifestyle that you're really, really after. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. See you on Monday.